Todd Lewis here from Mainline Dino at PRI 2024. Okay, this year at PRI, it's a release of our new, what's called CAN control system, which is a built from the ground up, brand new dyno software and control system. We brought it here to PRI to release and, and show to the world. What we've been using for 22 years now is a Dynalog system, which, which is just a company agreement between two companies where we make the dyno, the hardware part of it, and we get supplied dyno software and a control system. We fit it to our dynos. For us, that was a good arrangement. We didn't have to employ a dyno software developer, so it was all done, and that was all included as part of the normal package when we get supplied dyno control systems. It's now 25 to 30 years old, the software. We wanted a, a bit more of a modern look, for example. We wanted to add some extra testing capabilities and it just got to the point where it was easier to do it with a brand new from the ground up uh, architecture for controlling the dyno. The Dynalock system is still quite good as far as what it does from a data acquisition point of view. There's just more better options to do when you do something from the ground up these days as far as processes in, inside the controllers, that sort of stuff. So we're controlling the dyno at a thousand hertz now. We've got gigabyte uh, communication speeds between the controller and the PC. And the existing system is more analog based as far as the, the data measurements concerned, that sort of stuff. With this new system, we've all got you know, CAN based microcontrollers in the dyno, all connected back to a main control unit. The new system, imagine like a very advanced DAC. It communicates via CAN to two pod controllers in the case of a, a two-wheel drive hub dyno. The old system used a, a more rack-based, large PCB style of arrangement, where this unit here, it's just simply like a, a very compact billet aluminium, looks fancy, very expensive controller, and very high speed. The program can operate up to four screens, which we've done here. A standard pe uh, setup will run two screens, but this, because we can run four, we've decided to display four. So this screen here would be your traditional ramp testing screen. This software is very, very very configurable. You can run one, two, up to four different windows on here with eight channels in each particular screen. That would get a bit cramped, so you wouldn't necessarily run that, but minimum of 12 runs here back to back and just overlay them. We've obviously got our brag numbers that pop up the top of the screen. So this will be our new branding you'll see on the internet as far as a, a dynograph's concerned. We have a data grid function, much like the old system, which is up to 54 channels up here. You can put any dyno channel in here you want to. This left screen here is the equivalent of our dial screen, which is like basically a steady state tuning, but you can also do a lot more advanced modes on this new software. We have like a custom torque mode where you can dial up a torque figure and just run the car through a constant torque load. You can run what's called a, a drive test, where it simulates basically like road load. You can just run a car through the gears and simulate the car on the road. Expanding from that, we are going to have a dedicated drag simulation where it uses road load force as the parameter how the dyno the car is controlled. But down to the point, we'll have like a tree where you can bump in and actually that test is going to be done over a 400 meter test. You can do the traditional linear ramp test or you can, if you want to get a drive shaft curve out of a car, import it into here as a CFD file, the dyno will actually do a full normal dyno pull over a non-linear test as well. So once again, simulating what the car sees at the track. This data up here, I do have a log open at the moment. So if I click over here and sort of move my cursor through here, it will show me while I'm just looking at here, power and torque and AFR, I can look at up to whatever channels are logged at the same time in this screen here. So 600 second continuous loop. So we can just use the dyno, do some steady state stuff, do a few ramp tests. If I want to, then I can save that as a log independent of the normal ramp test data. So we can re review that in great detail here. We've got five pages of data logging up to four screens with up to, you can put 32 channels per screen if you wanted to. So overkill, but it's for people who want to connect a lot of CAN data into the system, you can do that. If you want to connect uh, an aftermarket ECU to the dyno, you can, it's hardwired into this control unit rather than going for USB adapters into a computer. So we, we've gone through and mapped the retarders now, so we have very precise control. We know when we put a an output voltage into the retarder, we know what it's going to apply to the car. We're getting more and more uh, requests now from EV manufacturers where they want to monitor, say, corner to corner torque outputs of the, of the motor. So now we don't have a reason why we can't 
you know, have a test where we could have the dyno putting, requesting 500 newt meters here, 1,000 newt meters there, and the dyno will be able to do that because an EV car, they're not linked side to side but, but on some models. So, so them sorts of tests are going to be really specific for EVs, they are, by having a constant torque mode. People are sort of ordering in the next month or so. They'll be getting this model in, in February, March next year. But it's completely retrofitable to any mainline dyno we've got out there. We would just basically pull the existing control system out of it. We supply a plug-in harness and a control unit. We load some software and the customer's up and going. So it's less than a 30 minute process to convert it over to the, to the new dyno. We're not going to not support old dynos. They're still going to be supported to as long as they, they want to run their current control system and software, we can do that. Some of the basic ramp testing controls carries forward as far as tapping space bars and doing ramp test. That sort of functionality is still here. The main thing is here is that the data longing ability and the, and the CAN integration are the two biggest things that are advantage of the new software they are. So for, for troubleshooting and fine tuning cars, the ability in the data logs here is what can really make a, a, a user's life easy, it can do. Apart from what you see here, like the data grid, main screen, the ramp screen, and the data log screen, we have the ability like on here like to input some, like, some CAN data. Now you can do it and set it up where a customer, if they're well versed in CAN setting up on dashboards and stuff, they'll understand what they see on the screen here. So if they have their own proprietary CAN equipment they want to connect to the dyno, it's a pretty straightforward of just putting in a CAN ID and putting in the parameters and it's all set up ready to go. So